We begin tonight with the latest on the fallout at Baylor. Today, the Big 12 is demanding the university hand over the unedited findings of the Pepper Hamilton report. New information following a shooting outside a dance hall in Fort Worth. One of the two men fatally shot on Saturday at Hip Hop Dance Hall had graduated just last month from high school. Today, the Supreme Court delivered what may be the biggest legal defeat of the Obama presidency. The court deadlocked on whether to lift an injunction on one of the president's executive orders on immigration, tying his hands on that issue for the rest of his time in office. Breaking news this morning, legendary women's basketball coach Pat Summit has died. Hillary Clinton hits the road with a possible running mate and Donald Trump's campaign defends his comments on Britain leaving the European Union. Most cities, including right here in Central Texas, urge residents to spay and microchip their animals. President Obama will travel to Orlando on Thursday to offer support to the community after Sunday's attack that left 49 people dead. It's important for people to know that there are resources out there, that there are ways that they can mm -hmm. reach out, that suicide really is not the answer. Hi, Brody. 621 is your time on this Friday morning. Thanks so much for tuning in with us here on Texas Today. A 20-year-old is lucky to be alive after an animal running on the highway caused him to roll his car. A little bit sweaty here. I'm joined by Lisa. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. How was your workout? It was wonderful. Thanks so much. Well, it is International Assistance Dog Week, and today Faith Johnson is back with the Guide Dogs for the Blind program. After yesterday's news, they're not sure how to feel or what to believe. We do begin with that major shakeup at Baylor. It's head coach gone and two key staff members reprimanded for how reports of sexual assault were dealt with. We have Don Bland with us from the Humane Society of Central Texas. <laughs> And we have Oscar joining us this morning. With temperatures heating up and anxiety about the Zika virus growing, how will health officials combat the spread of Zika in this country? Today, Galen Culver has the story of one little known Oklahoma baseball player who recently reached the pinnacle of his sport. Take a look here. Many young women who survive cancer don't get enough information about how to preserve their fertility. This is a good battle. It is. Jane, get, get oh, angry. Look at Jane! Jane. We went nearly 11 stories underground. All right, Lisa. We do have some showers and thunderstorms moving through the central Texas area once again this morning. Let's get things over to Megan Massey with a check of your weather. Hey, Megan. We're Bye. taking a look at power outages courtesy of Encore. This morning, I want to step back. 249 active outages across the state of Texas. We're seeing 8,299 customers affected. In Salado, traffic is still backed up after two tractor trailers crashed just before 2 this morning. I'm gonna nail Jane right there with the dodgeball. Oh, Jane, oh, me. look at that. Zing right to the camera. Oh boy, tricelleride. All right. T Let's try glyceride. Let's try triglyceride. Oh. Very good. Let's do that. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jane Lonsdale. Chris Radcliffe has the morning off. Thanks for joining us on this Friday morning. And 6 30 is your time. We're live at Fort Hood this morning, tracking the story as the search continues for four missing Fort Hood soldiers after their military vehicle was swept away by floodwaters during a training exercise. It happened in Gatesville at Owl Creek Park on the western edge of Fort Hood. The bodies of three soldiers were found yesterday afternoon, and then another two found last night. Three more were rescued and are in stable condition at Carl Darnell Army Medical Center. That still leaves four out there this morning. So again, here's what we know. Rescue crews were called out to the Owl Creek Park area just before 1130 yesterday afternoon. 12 soldiers were inside when the military vehicle overturned into those flooded waters. All involved are from the group that is part of the 316th Field Artillery with the 2nd Armored Brigade Combat Team. They were all in a light medium tactical vehicle when it overturned. Now Lisa Hudson joins us live from outside Fort Hood and Lisa, what's the very latest this morning? Governor Greg Abbott said yesterday our thoughts and prayers go out to the soldiers, their families and the Fort Hood community and continue to be with those still unaccounted for. Texas stands ready to provide any assistance to Fort Hood as they deal with this tragedy. And as Lisa did say, there will be a press conference on Fort Hood at 8 o'clock this morning. We'll be streaming it live on our website. That's KCENTV.com. We could see more rain, though. Today, we'll get things over to meteorologist Wes Houck with a check of the rainfall that we've seen so far. Good morning to you. Well, it is official. House Speaker Paul Ryan will be voting for Donald Trump. Ryan is the highest ranked elected Republican official in the country. It was unclear if Ryan would throw his support behind Trump, considering the two's opposing views on key issues like foreign policy, the budget and immigration. Ryan says his stance was not the product of any deal with Trump, but about his principles and policies. Uh, what matters to me more than anything else are our core principles, the policies that come from them, the agenda that we're driving in the House that we're about to release, 
And I just wanted to have uh, a good comfort level that these policies, these principles and policies are something that we would, work, we would be able to work with him on. And it took some time just to have those conversations, not just myself, uh, but with our staff to make sure we understood each other very, very well. Important that we have real now, right now, it's unclear if Ryan and Trump may actually campaign or fundraise together. And there are stunning new twists this morning in that deadly shooting of a professor on the UCLA campus. Investigators now believe the gunman, Minak Surkar, had a kill list and planned to murder two professors before killing himself. Surkar gunned down engineering professor Bill Klug, a married father of two, but the second professor was off campus. A woman also on that list was found dead earlier yesterday of a gunshot at her Minnesota home.